Hey everyone, Saw Justice League, I have a lot of thoughts on it. I'm gonna do like a quick little reaction because I don't have a lot of time. Then I'm gonna come back later on and do like an in-depth discussion. I did see it with my brother Sterling. He actually may be in town, so we might actually collaborate together. Have a little, you know, old school discussion for old time's sake, do something like that. Initial thoughts though, uh, I, I actually liked it. I, I enjoyed it. I was pleasantly surprised. Um, Coming into this, there was a lot I was worried about with Justice League. It's one of those movies where I've been following it for so long, and I had so much invested in it because it features tons of characters that I grew up loving. And then hearing all about all the problems that they were having, just, you know, Batman v Superman, let's just be honest, did not get the DCEU started off on a great foot. Technically, Man of Steel was first, and even that was divisive. And then follow up with Suicide Squad, which was admittedly terrible. Wonder Woman got things back off on a good foot, and Justice League really needed that good press coming in, but everything about it just seemed like things weren't really gelling and they weren't meshing well. Then you add on to the unfortunate tragedy with Zack Snyder and his daughter. Um, it just seemed like it was really set up to not do well. And of course, the critics came out and did not have really great things to say about it. It was mixed, to say uh, the least. But, you know, after seeing some other people's reactions, I was hopeful, but I was cautiously hopeful. And sitting in the theater on, I guess it was like Thursday night, I was pleased. I was pleasantly surprised. Um, just off the top of my head, I think the cast was the strongest part of the movie, which is always a great starting point for your movie to be successful and to be well-liked by the fans that are watching it. And Ben Affleck as Batman in this is just about right in the corner pocket. Um, full disclosure, for me, the peak presentation of these characters has always been the DC animated universe done between the years of like what like 1990 and know, 2005 or something that's what I always that's the benchmark that I hold all of these characters to Wonder Woman Batman Superman the Flash etc and so on that's the highest level that I've seen them portrayed as personally and that's my favorite representation of them I feel like it's the most balanced uh, you've got plenty of, of, of sampling to pull from to show their character growth and development, uh, the action, their power sets, the way they interact with each other. And this Justice League did a great job of representing that. I felt like Batman overall was smart, confident, but, you know, tortured and kind of a dick sometimes. They definitely did a good job of mellowing out this Batman from his BBS version to one that most casual fans are going to find much more appealing and familiar. This Batman is, in terms of intensity, he's well, he's probably actually less intense than Christian Bale's Batman by the end of it. Um, whereas BVS Batman was like more intense. Uh, he's shooting criminals and he's like basically breaking dudes' necks by slamming slamming them into the floor. But this Batman is he's actually more hopeful, and I think that speaks to the effect that Superman had. I know a lot of people complain that Superman in these films doesn't feel like he's a beacon of hope and yada, 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 because he wasn't the Superman that we're used to. He wasn't like smile and, you know, dimples and, you know, with the S curl and high-fiving kids and taking cats out of trees. But it's not the only way to represent hope. Sometimes hope is when somebody that you've come to rely on and maybe take for granted, which the Superman in this universe has been, is taken away. Look at the effect that it has on the world around you. This Batman and this Justice League movie definitely shows that absence of the goodness that Superman represents and the safety that Superman gives people. Wonder Woman and Batman in this movie are, are top notch. Gal Gadot follows up her Wonder Woman performance with another strong outing uh, as Wonder Woman. And um, I was really anxious to see how she was portrayed in the hands of a different director, including Joss Whedon, who we know had a Wonder Woman script that was rejected and for good reason. Uh, I guess I'll get into that more in, a, in another video, but it was not the most encouraging uh, or respectful display of the greatest female superhero of all time. And so it was interesting that he actually got his hands on the character that he was denied access to before. Um, mm, a lot of people had problems with that. I personally enjoyed way much a much larger portion of the movie and Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman than I think some other people did, but that doesn't mean that their concerns or complaints are invalid. Uh, it just means that that's not what I was focusing on as I watched the movie. Let's talk about the newcomers a little bit. Flash, uh, played by Ezra Miller, uh, is fantastic. Admittedly, we've seen a lot of his 
best moments in the trailers, but we've also seen a lot of moments that didn't come in the movie because this is not really too much of a spoiler, but there's a lot of moments in this movie that were in the trailer that are not in this film. Uh, whether they were cut out because Joss Whedon needed to refilm them, whether they were cut out because they needed to trim the movie down to two hours, whether they were cut out because the powers that be didn't agree with Zack Snyder's vision of the world, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure anybody really knows the full story, but you can definitely see the fingerprints of a few different sources popping up in this film, which is another reason why I say I was pleasantly surprised because there were a lot of things working against this being a solid film. Ezra Miller, though, I was pretty pretty confidently set that he would do a good job from the get-go. Um, casting, I didn't really have a lot to think about it, but seeing the trailers and then again seeing him in this film, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm excited seeing his film in the works. If they can just get a freaking director and a freaking script ready, they can film the damn thing, and then we can make our judgments from there. Cyborg. Um, Cyborg, I was worried about. Uh, as a black guy, <laughs> as, a, as a black geek, or what have you, um, we still are, it's still a new experience for us to see black heroes portrayed in big budget movies on the same level as their white counterparts. Cyborg has always been a hero that I think a lot of kids in my generation, especially kids of color, have um, kind of, you know, gravitated towards because, you know, a lot of us grew up with Teen Titans who were representing heroes of a different age, you know, age that we we're closer to when it was out and popular. The real Teen Titans, not Teen Titans Go, that sucks, it's trash, move on, don't fight me about it. But Cyborg, as a black male hero that was good natured, that was powerful, and that was a leader on his team, was something that we didn't get to see a lot of. Seeing him in this movie, in the trailers, he looks very melancholy, he looks very detached. He was also battling against that fear that people have of they're changing the way that I knew it when I grew up. And Cyborg is not traditionally a founding member of the Justice League. He's also not anywhere in the Justice League and Justice League Unlimited cartoon series, which is how most people were introduced to the world of DC Comics. So a lot of people were thrown by that. Some people saw it as just a, a weak attempt at diversifying the group. Um, they also don't know that Jon Stewart was the Green Lantern in those cartoons for that same reason because traditionally Hal Jordan is the Green Lantern that is a part of the Justice League but you know most people only know so much of what their own experiences taught them. Pleasantly, pleasantly really surprised both at the character and at the performance. It's a nuanced performance, it's a mature performance and he shows a lot more energy and personality than the trailers would have you believe. I don't know if that's something that we have Joss Whedon to thank for. I don't know if that's just something that they were kind of holding back because a lot of his interaction and his actions in the film are technically spoilers, so they don't want to give away too much. I'm actually looking forward to seeing more of him in this movie, uh, or, or in the future movies. The original plan was for a Cyborg to have his own film. I don't think that's necessary yet at all. Um, I think he's going to work best bouncing off of other more established characters, but because of his power set, he can be one of those threads throughout the DC extended universe or movie universe or whatever the hell they're calling this thing. He and Flash together, that's interesting. That's something I'd like to see more of. It's a definite plus for the character and for the franchise going forward. Jason Momoa's Aquaman was much more grounded than the trailers, the last trailers had us believe. I was worried about him because I was worried about him becoming kind of a joke and basically Jason Momoa with a pitchfork, which is fine for some people, but we still need to respect him as somebody that's a bit of a tortured soul, that's a, a bit of a, a loner, but that also has a regal persona because later on in this franchise, he's going to have to be representing and leading an entire race or group or culture of people. Uh, with a history and a backstory all their own. And I saw glimpses of that and that potential in his portrayal. A lot of the moments that we're seeing from him in the, trailer, in the last couple of trailers are toward the end of the film when he's opened up a bit with the team. And uh, I would say that he has some growth. Um, I think probably next to Cyborg, he has the most character growth on the team just in terms of his, his attitude towards Bruce and, and teaming up at all toward the beginning of the film and then by the end, um, he's much more a part of things. And I think that that's going to bleed into and lead into his 
solo movie. This is where we'll get into spoilers a little bit, just a little bit of spoilers. It's barely anything because if anybody's been following this movie or looking at merchandise or, you know, has any kind of common sense, they will know that, spoilers, Superman is in this movie and he's actually a fairly major part of the movie, which we weren't quite sure how much he was going to be in it. And this Superman is top notch. Um, Henry Cavill is fantastic in this role. I think he's been doing a good job from the start, but I understand why some people didn't feel like they could connect with this version of Superman. I say this version because, once again, like I said earlier, most people hold on to the version that they initially encounter, and that's it for them. They don't really understand that these characters have been around so long that they've been done and redone and redone and redone again before they've even seen them one time. Henry Cavill Superman is much more in line with how the mass public, which is not very knowledgeable about comics and not very smart in terms of accepting something a little bit different outside of what their expectations are, he fits much more in line with that. But he also doesn't lose the things that I liked about his original portrayal of Superman in Man of Steel because this Superman has quite literally been reborn. The Superman clearly remembers uh, his actions and his interactions with the other heroes from before in Batman v Superman and I guess Spike Sinch in Man of Steel. But he seems much more um, at peace, I think. Uh, and it makes sense in the world that they've built. That's one thing that I didn't agree with a lot of the critiques on Man of Steel and Batman v Superman and Henry Cavill's uh, portrayal is that people wanted this character to be something that didn't make sense for the universe that he was in. In Man of Steel, he's not Superman yet. He's somebody that's learning about who they are and where they come from, who's been lonely and who's been hidden from the world because of the choices that his parents made for better or for worse. Um, and he's trying to figure out not only who he is and what he can do, but how he fits into the world. And the world is trying to learn how they fit in around him. And Batman v Superman, he's doing these things because he knows it's the right thing to do, but he's not really sure if he's doing the right thing for everybody else. And admittedly, when you feel unappreciated, it starts to weigh down on you. And it starts to make you question whether or not you're doing the right things. And then, of course, he died. Well, this Superman feels much more carefree and confident in who he is and what his, what his place is in the world. And I think being around a team is a part of that. The thing that makes Superman hard to write is that he's so strong that his main conflict has to come from his battles with humanity and his ability to relate to others. Um, and also the guilt that he feels when even with his almost unlimited power... He can't do the things that he wants to do for the people around him. This Superman has shades of that. Um, he seems like a leader, but also some, someone that other heroes can look up to. And it's going to be interesting to find out in the coming months how much of that was Snyder's original vision, how much of that we have Joss Whedon to thank for. There were a lot of reshoots for this movie. And I think my gut tells me, along with some sources that I trust, that there were more reshoots for this movie that we've been led to believe. How much of that was planned previous to Joss Whedon coming on and how much of that was something that happened by accident because Joss Whedon kind of came in and did his thing and then it snowballed from there. I don't know. Um, I don't have that kind of information, but it worked. For all the critics out there that are saying that this movie is, I think on Rotten Tomatoes, it's in the 40s or high 30s at this point. Uh, and I know for some actual ratings that take into account how viewers feel it's more in the, the B plus range. I've seen people on Facebook that I know personally that went to see this movie that surprisingly enjoyed it. And, and a lot of people that I trust on YouTube and that I enjoy watching enjoyed it. I definitely fall into the latter category. I was expecting, I was hoping, but I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was. Are there problems with it? Yes. Is Steppenwolf a ter terrible villain? Yeah, he pretty much is. Um, he's barely a villain at all. He's more of a, Technically, the mother boxers are the MacGuffin, but Steppenwolf almost is, in a way, because he doesn't have a personality. Um, there's something about parademons feeding off of fear, which is new, which is interesting because also, okay, a little bit of a spoiler. I'll put up a spoiler warning. The Green Lantern technically is in this movie, but it's not the way you think it's going to be. So to have the parademons feeding off fear and that be a major component of the way that they operate and to not have a Green Lantern be a part of the film is an interesting choice. But... Once again, 
it didn't really have anything to do with the story. Do the villains have problems? Yes. Is that something that Marvel's gotten away with for probably like 10 out of their 17, 15 movies? Yeah. Um, it, but Steppenwolf's pretty bad. But the rest of the cast and the Justice League who we're supposed to be focused on is so good, the movie doesn't suffer too much for it. Are there other problems structurally? Does it feel rushed? Yeah, at two hours it seems a little short. I definitely think it could have been stretched to about 215, 220 with a couple extra scenes in there. Just to, not to pad the time, but to expand upon the characters and to let the movie breathe a little bit. But they chose not to, and I guess you'd rather have a movie that's clip and brisk and leaves people wanting more than something that feels bloated and a little bit heavy-handed like BBS, um, which ironically the longer cut was a superior cut because it made more sense. It, DC's got to get the editing under control. They, Whoever's fault it is, whether it's directing, editing, whether it's the studio heads, because it's, it's killing them. Uh, Patty Jenkins' Wonder Woman didn't have a lot cut out from it and it was a fantastic movie, but BBS and Suicide Squad suffered from it terribly. And this movie seems to have gotten away with it, but maybe not as much as it thinks because it is struggling a little bit at the box office. If you are on the fence about this movie due to written reviews and critic reviews and Twitter, go see it for yourself. That's what I say about almost anything that you watch or read or come across. It's okay to take into account other people's opinions, but just because so many people say one thing and so many people say another doesn't mean that one of those groups or either one of those groups is right at all. You have to form the opinion for yourself. And I think this movie is a key example of that. I enjoyed it. I don't have a rating system. Uh, I don't have a good, great, bad. I don't have an A plus, B plus, whatever, so-and-so out of 10. I enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing it again. Is it good enough for me to rush right out and see it again? No. Um, is it even the best superhero movie of the year? I'm a DC stan, and even I have to say probably not. I just saw Thor not too long ago, and it was fantastic. Spider-Man was also good. Uh, but am I pleasantly surprised, and am I excited to see these characters again? That's a definite yes, and I think right now that's a plus and a win for DC. Come back later. Uh, I'll have the video up. Stone and I will discuss it, or I'll talk more about it in depth. I've got a couple pages here full of notes. Go see the movie this weekend before Thanksgiving or after you eat with your family. Enjoy it, and then form the opinion for yourself. Take care.